everyone, welcome back to Life on the Branch. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about taking hamsters to the vet. So, this is something that doesn't get thought of very often. When you buy a hamster, you're like, ah, oh, it's inexpensive. And then, usually you buy like a starter kit for hamsters that like isn't big enough and you've wasted money. And then you get a big enough kit, but it's still not that expensive relative to other pets. Even when you get like a nice like enclosure like this, or if you build a bin cage, you can have hamsters for relatively low upkeep costs. However, sometimes hamsters get sick, or their teeth need to be trimmed, or their nails need to be trimmed, or what have you, and you have to take them to the vet. One of the issues that I see in the hamster ownership community at large um, is hamsters that need to go to the vet not being taken to the vet because hamsters are supposed to be cheap and since they're cheap then they're not valued as much as other pets so they're not taken to the vet because vets are expensive but if you own a pet I believe it's your responsibility to care for that pet including taking them to the vet when it's necessary but if you're watching this video I think you probably do care about your hamster enough to take them to the vet so let's talk about that because hamsters are not dogs or cats uh, a lot of vets don't have the knowledge to care for hamsters. So, at least where we are, we have to take our hamsters to an exotic veterinarian, which is a specific type of vet uh, that specializes in basically not dogs and cats. The thing about going to an exotic veterinarian is that they can be harder to find. So, I would really recommend before your hamster gets sick, trying to find a vet facility that has an exotic veterinarian at that location. So that's what we did. And when Butter got sick uh, and needed their teeth trimmed is what we, that's what they determined was the problem. She had lost some weight because her teeth were misaligned. And so she couldn't like eat the food properly. This was a while ago. So when we took to the vet, it was all well and good pretty painless, obviously not free, but a painless experience overall. However, we have to continuously every month take butter to the vet to get their teeth trimmed. Uh, and even then, if their teeth grow super fast for whatever reason, uh, it can cause issues. So this past time, uh, we went to take her to the vet, but her teeth had grown a little bit too long, so she had to put, be put under so she could get her teeth trimmed more than normal but the part that was frustrating is even though we had found an exotic veterinarian when we called to make the you know the new appointment they had moved so then we were on a hunt for another exotic veterinarian so we called about 10 facilities we ended up finding three uh, within an hour of us that had exotic vets however two of those vets did not have appointments available for over a month. And one of them, the one we ended up going with, was a week out from when we called. And this can be a big problem, especially if your hamster is undergoing an emergency. Now our hamster was not an emergency, obviously sooner rather than later is preferred, but you know, it's something to be aware of. Now, what about taking your hamster to the vet? You found a vet, you've made an appointment, gone through like the time and the stress of getting an appointment and finding an exotic vet, you're going to want to take your hamster in an enclosure that still is somewhat functional. Um, what do I mean by that? So if you look online for hamster carriers, you're going to find something that's about this size, basically the size of a purse. The problem is that when you take your hamster to the vet, um, sometimes they'll want you to drop the hamster off in the morning and pick it up in the evening, and that whole day, your hamster, aside from when it's being treated, is going to be in this enclosure. Now, you can still fit a hide in here, and you can fit, you know, some sprinkle some food in and put in a little bit of water, which is why it works and like as an emergency, like we have little ones like this in case there's like a fire. We don't want, we don't have the space to store four Katie Critter trails. 
but we can store four of these. Um, but we don't use these for the vet. Instead, what I recommend is having a kitty critter trail. Yes, you heard that right. The only time this is ever really appropriate is as a carrier. Um, because compared to this, this is actually significantly larger. Um, now, what benefit is that? You can put in way more bedding, so, you know, your hamster can, like, burrow a little bit. Obviously, not enough. This would never work every day, but as a carrier, they can burrow a little bit. You can fit in a food bowl. You can put in a water bowl. This actually comes with, you know, if you, if you buy it new, you can get a um, water bottle. It comes with a water bottle. Um, and then we put in, like, a tunnel, and then we put in, like, a hide. You know... Is it the most exciting thing? No. Is it probably still boring for them? I'm sure. But they're also like at the vet for a reason, so they're kind of sick. But it's certainly better than this purse, which is literally the width of some Syrian hamsters. So that's something. And I know this video is kind of short and a little bit all over the place, but the reason I wanted to make it overall is because I think that when we took Butters to the vet and I was talking about it with some of my friends and some of my family members, I got a lot of comments about like, because this last time, because she had to go under, it took, it was $280. I got a lot of comments about, oh, that's really expensive. Like, why are you spending that much on a hamster? And I think that if you're going to own any pet, including hamsters, but any pet, you should be prepared to care for that pet the best that you can and provide it like a quality of life. If we had not taken Butter to the vet to get their teeth trimmed, um, especially this last time where because of the delay in moving the exotic vet and everything, where it was like overgrowing, you know, too much, Butter could have like passed away, like starved to death, because that's what happens with misaligned teeth when you can't chew on seeds or whatever, and you don't adjust their diet to meet their needs. You know, you're putting, you're you're valuing the hamster's life less than the cost of a vet trip. And if that's how you feel about any breed of animal, you probably shouldn't own that animal. <laughs> um, and I think that. This is the problem with the, the low cost of hamsters. Hamsters are very cheap to buy, the actual hamster. But as a result, people want to treat them like they are cheap, their existence is cheap. But they're still, you know, a living, breathing, feeling, caring creature, and they deserve to be treated like that, even if their original price tag is small. And that includes getting them enclosures that are the right size. It includes getting them the proper bedding, the proper food, the depth of bedding that they need. But it also includes taking them to the vet when they need to go. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our content, hamster or otherwise, click subscribe, ding the bell button to know when we post, which is almost every day. Most importantly, I hope you have a wonderful day. Also, as an aside, Butter is doing much better and has put on a lot of weight, so... If you want an update on Butter's like original diagnosis, you can click up here. And if you want to see um, what Butter's new diet is, because um, now he's on a soft food diet. Also, I say he and she interchangeably. Butter's actually a male. I just, pronouns and me is a struggle. But his new like soft foods diet, if you have a hamster that has bad teeth like Butter, uh, you can click the link up here. Now, bye.